Week 11, part four. Uh, so I wanna show you several descriptions of what these electromagnetic waves look like. And we'll start with a wonderful animation that I have to do a screen share to get to. And now you should be seeing it. So what this is uh, showing is uh, an electric charge right here positive electric charge, and the white lines are the electric field lines. It doesn't show the magnetic field lines on this uh, diagram at all. But the interesting, interesting thing is what happens if I start to move this charge around? And they have a way to do that. I can just grab hold of it and move it. And you see some interesting things going on in these field lines. I can sort of shake them. And if I shake up and down like this, make the particle go up and down. The way I shake it is kind of weird. I've got a, it's, it's like I'm grabbing it by a rubber band or something, and making it wiggle. But do you see how it sends out a funny little wave that travels outward? Also notice that if I move it very steadily, no wave propagates. Let's try that again. I'll try to move it real steadily. It's hard to do. I could just have them do it for me. And here it comes. And it just moves along. There's, there's really no wave happening here. There, there's no wiggle that's traveling uh, out to a different place. Where did it go? I guess I need to reset it. So to get the waves that travel like this, you have to accelerate the charge. And it radiates in nearly all directions, except notice when I'm accelerating it up and down. In the straight up and down direction, there's no, no radiating happening there. There's no wave traveling straight up and down. I managed to do it perfectly. I guess I could have them again do it. There, they can wiggle it beautifully up and down. And you see in the straight up and straight down direction, there's nothing happening there. Notice also in the horizontal direction, as you get further and further away, the electric field way out here at the edge is pointing either up or down. It's, it's not pointing sideways so much as up and down. So it becomes a vertical, it becomes a transverse electric field. The field is pointing across the direction that the wave is traveling. That's a transverse wave. If you want to play with this, uh, you can. It's online. It's uh, at a place called PHET. That stands for Physics Education something. Uh, it's at the University of Colorado, I believe. And look under their simulations and physics and light and radiation and radiating charge. And you can fire up that same simulation and play with it as much as you like. Now what I want to do is take a look at another description of this that includes the magnetic field. It's an animation, it's just a diagram. But again, you have to imagine that you've got charges moving up and down here. And in fact, probably we would imagine there'd be positive charges moving up and negative charges moving down. Both of those correspond to an upward direction of the current. If the positive charge is going up and the negative charge is going down, then current is going up. And when you have a current flowing up, then that creates a magnetic field. Current going up, I would grab it with my thumb and my fingers point in the direction of the magnetic field. And you see, in fact, here are X's over here and dots over here for the magnetic field going around the wire. 
And essentially, as the current goes up and down and up and down, if you have something that manages to make that current do that, some sort of circuit that drives the current one way and then the other, then this wire, if it's a wire, would radiate these kinds of fields. Electric fields going up and down in kind of a similar fashion to the animation I just showed you. And now magnetic fields, which would be going in and out of the page, according to these X's and dots. And maybe you can even notice that the electric field now has a Y component and the magnetic field would have a Z component, just like we worked out in the, uh, in the example uh, in, in Maxwell's derivation earlier. This correctly shows that as the magnetic, as this wave propagates and spreads out further, the magnetic field gets weaker. Do you see the dots spreading out? They don't correctly show that in the electric field, in part because it's hard to, to do so. And you've got a certain number of loops that you sort of have to finish. And uh, so it doesn't quite show that correctly, but it's a very, very well done diagram in other respects. So this is the kind of thing that would propagate on out. It'd be nice to have this be animated, but I haven't found any such. So that's another kind of description. Now notice again that as you move along the X direction, that's the way the wave is moving, that the electric field is in the vertical direction and the uh, magnetic field would be perpendicular to the, to, to the page. Here is yet another diagram of that same thing. Just look along that X axis and plot the electric and magnetic fields. And you'd have the electric field reaching a peak at the very same time as the magnetic field did, and then they both reach zero, and then they both cross over and go the opposite direction. This is the kind of a wave that would be propagating. And when you solve Maxwell's equations properly, you discover that there's a relationship between the peaks of the electric and magnetic fields, the, the uh, amplitudes of those two. And they are that the electric field is C times the magnetic field. Now you can also uh, do some, um, you, you can work out how much energy is carried by these waves. And I'm not going to do that derivation, I'm just going to give you the answer. And that is that the intensity, we define the energy carried by the wave in terms of the intensity, because it's, it's not just a single no, uh, amount of energy in one spot, it's spread over the whole area. And in fact, the area is growing as the wave travels further and further away and spreads out, then the amount of energy in any one region diminishes. And so we quantify the intensity of the wave as the power, the energy per time, divided by the area. So if you want to know how intense light or radio waves or anything like that are, it's a matter of how much power per unit time is crossing some area. And that, it turns out, can be related to how strong are the electric and magnetic fields. Here's the basic relationship. It's the electric field times the magnetic field divided by two mu naught. Now, if you want, you can use this relationship to rewrite the intensity relationship so that you don't have both the electric and magnetic fields, but just have one or the other. And that way you can get a relationship between how strong is the electric field and what's the intensity, or how strong is the magnetic field and the intensity. And in fact, if you want, you can invert these and solve for what is the electric field if you know the intensity. Here it's what's the intensity if you know the electric field and of course also for the magnetic field.